Hello, and welcome to another episode of Exact Text, brought to you by Actionable Insights. My name is Seth Harrison, and today I want to talk about macros. We are getting a play of questions on Xactimate Ninjas, and from those that are downloading our Insight Sheet macros, about how do I run a macro? How do I save a macro? How do I share or send a macro to somebody else with the export and import functions of the data transfer tool? So what better place to shoot a video out about it than Exact Text? As you can see here, I have an Xactimate 28 estimate open, and I'm here on the sketch tab. I have a few rooms already dropped in here with line items in them ready to demonstrate. I'm going to jump over to my estimate items tab here and come in into my first example, example one. Now, one of the first questions, most basic, is how do I just save a macro? I have a collection of line items that I like to use in this order. How do I save this group of line items so that I can just hit a button and it adds those and then I can go edit it from there? Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to select the first line item here, one. And I'm going to hold shift to select all the line items here. And note, as I hold shift and click three, it then highlights all of the line items there uh, from the top to the bottom. If I wanted to, I could hold control instead of shift and just select a single line item. Uh, but for this case, we want to save a macro of all the line items in this particular section. So I'm going to click one, hold shift, and then click three again. And it's going to select them all. Now I'm going to right click on one of these line items where it says other options down here and I'm going to come over to Save Macro. Now this little menu comes up, and my code here, you can see here I have in the Sketch tab my Macros tab loaded up top right, so you can see the, what uh, the results of entering this information is. So code is code. This is what you're going to name the macro. Let's say in this pretty, you want to say carpet and then pad, or prep carpet pad. Everybody has their own naming conventions, but, uh, and then you could give a description of this is floor prep, carpet pad, and carpet. Now, why did I put any information in my description at all or in the, put the code? Essentially, the, the information here is searchable. As you can see at the top of this macros tab here, there's a search bar. So keywords that you put in your description or how you title your macro in the code section can actually help you find it later. So if you're putting pertinent information in that description section, it'll make you more efficient as you look for the macros uh, that you're trying to save. And so once I hit OK here, I'm going to now have my prep carpet pad. I'm going to come to my test macros here. I created a room for this. I'm going to type in prep. There it is, prep carpet pad. I'm going to run it. And then I have those three line outs, floor prep, floor pad, and carpet, just as I had saved them in that order, which is excellent. One thing to note, uh, having saved a lot of the macros on Insight Sheets in the Insight Sheet database, uh, I've noticed there's a slight like a weird quirk that you should follow if you want to make sure that line items, uh, when you run the macro, show up in the order that you save them. Always start at the top here and then hold shift and click to the bottom. If, for whatever reason, you start at the bottom and hold shift and click at the top, it is possible, if not likely, that line items will be slightly out of order. For example, the first line item or two might end up at the bottom. It's just part of the experience of, of using this program. It's some of the, it's the guidance I can provide. So best practice when you're saving a macro is to start at the top and then hold shift and click down to the bottom to select all the line items that way. Example two, uh, another, if you'll notice here, when I right clicked uh, save macro, there were a couple buttons that I, we've, I have, che have checked or have or haven't checked that I haven't discussed yet. First is personal. If this one comes checked, I'm gonna uncheck it in this one. If you have multiple users, um, that can log into Xactimate from the same device. You may want to save a macro that's just for your user, not for every user. So you could check on personal if it's just for you personally. But I don't see a lot of uses for that. Um, include attached notes or save line item customizations. Let's talk about save line item customizations. As you can see with this line item, WTR SNKD, typically, as this is a WTR line item, in this case, the trade is historically CLN-R. Uh, cleaning and remediation technician. And as you can see, as I trade, change that labor trade code back to what it normally is, the line item is black. It's no longer green. It's a normal line item, the CLN-R. Let's say, for example, you have a plumber on site performing this activity, and you felt inclined to update the trade code to the PLM trade code. And I'm going to hit OK here. One, it's going to uh, add some money here, uh, in this case, and it changed the line item green. Uh, but you can, for example, save this line item as a macro or collection and save those customizations. So if I right-click now and I come to Other Options and I come to Save Macro, 
and I select for save line item customizations. I'm going to call this uh, uh, sink PLM. So plumber uh, detaches the sink. I'm going to hit OK, and I've now saved that line item with my customizations uh, applied to it. So I don't have to rent do that every single time. I'm going to come here and I'm in my test macros room, and uh, we just saved that as uh, plumber sink. And so I have plumber detaches the sink. This is the macro I just saved. I'm going to now run it up here. And you can see it came across green uh, with my trade codes still applied. So now I was able to actually save a line item with those customizations. Uh, one thing you'll note, let me uh, real quick show you the other, the last checkbox here. If I come back here and I type in carpet and I run this, you'll notice that no F9 notes are currently attached to this uh, macro, prep carpet pad that I saved. But FCCAV here has an F9 note, two actually, uh, that were not saved. So I'm going to delete my test room and come back to example one. I'm going to right click or hold shift, click one, hold shift, then click three. Click one, hold shift, then click three. I'm going to right click there and uh, on the line items. I'm going to hit save macro. And now I'm going to make sure that I include attached notes. So pad notes pad with notes. Now you'll notice that when I come here and I have pad with notes, go to my test room, we'll run the pad with notes macro, uh, and it'll have those notes already attached to it. So uh, now all I have to do is go in and update the F9 note to make sure that it applies to the unique loss scenario at hand. One thing to know about macros, uh, I've dropped in the carpet line item through graphical estimating, so I've dropped it in through the sketch tab, and you'll see that it's a purple line of them. It's using the algorithms within the program to generate uh, variables here, FLR underscore RPL. But if I were to try and save this purple line item in a macro, it's going to give me this nice box that says I can't do it. Uh, sketch algorithm items cannot be saved as part of a macro. All marked sketch algorithm items will be ignored when saving a macro. So I can still save it. It's just not going to save that purple line items. It's just going to save the black ones in this case. Uh, and last but not least, uh, how to run a macro. You've seen me do it a few times from a macro tab. Uh, I can come up here to an actual macro and hit run. Or I will quickly delete this whole thing. You can right click on a blank room. Come here to other options. Uh, retrieve macro. It's going to come up with a macro box. Uh, let's run uh, the carpet one here, just to give you an example. AI insight sheet. So I didn't even type in, right, let's say carpet, uh, high grade. This is one of our actionable insights, insight sheets, or the macros for one of the newest insight sheets. And it comes over with my bolded header that I've already saved here. And then all the F9 notes from the insight sheet are attached. Uh, understandably, this is a long F9 note. This would be difficult to type out every single time uh, that you were running this, uh, adding this line item in to justify it. Uh, so saving these macros and running them and then adjusting them, editing them, is a much more efficient way of putting together scopes, especially uh, if you're writing similar scopes uh, or you come across a scenario multiple times and you don't want to replicate each individual detail every single time you'd like to the process to move a little bit faster um, and so yeah this is uh, an example of an actionable insights macro we often get questions as hey i see that your insight sheets your invoicing templates have macros with them what's included well all the line items from that macro are included and then the f9 note that was uh, on that page of that insight sheet of the invoicing template is there and all you would have to do is come in here and update some of the calculations here uh, to say it's three tests, for example. And then last but not least, we also have a slight disclaimer on, ours, on our macros. Uh, it's just making sure that you actually come back and review it to make sure that you updated this macro so you're not inputting information from a job that's not your job, etc. cetera. Uh, it's kind of a, a helpful, helpful uh, li uh, disclaimer for you guys to remember to update those. And then you would update the calc fields and your line items are good to go. Uh, for those insight sheets that have a situationally relevant section, these are other helpful reminders of, hey, do these line items apply to my scenario when I'm trying to invoice, for example, carpet in this insight sheet in this macro. And so last, the question was, how do I save macros? How do I like send them off? I want to share them, uh, et cetera. You can come here. Um, note that this, this where I was, this is within an estimate, within an ESX file. This is the exact m 28s normal window, the, the main window. Uh, you would normally start in Control Center. I'm going to come over here to Xactimate. 
and come down to tools and come to my data transfer. If you want to, if you have a macro on your computer that you want to send, you can just come here uh, to click send, select which folder you want it to go down to, and then select that macro, and we'll come here and we'll say, hey, I want to save that pad with the notes macro. I want to send, I want to send it to my hard drive so that I can then attach it in an email and send it off. On the flip side, let's say somebody has sent you a macro, or even better, you've bought one of Actionable Insights macros. You would like to data transfer that into your Xactimate. So we're gonna retrieve it now and select the item and you'll note here is my pad notes is right there. Of course, I already have it in here, so I don't need to go through that. Uh, but yes, this is how you would use the data transfer tool to either export your macros out of Xactimate so that you can send them or import your macros so that you can put them into your Xactimate and use them. So this has been a lengthy exact hack, uh, but I thought it worthy as we get plenty of questions during class in Xactimate Ninjas about how do I save a macro? How do I run a macro? What are the different buttons that I click along the way? What do they do? And then how do I both export and import a macro, sharing it uh, using the data transfer tool? Uh, hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next week.